What makes a pasty like the Cornish? The many others seem to think they can. Them never. The thing about a pasty is it's Cornish. The Cornish love a pasty. Hello everyone, once again we are back in the kitchen and today we're going to make some savoury products. Now uh, this is by special request I suppose from our managing director Mr Gareth Lindsay who said to me the other day why aren't you making anything savoury like a nice pie? So that's what we're going to make. So I'm going to make two different uh, pies, pasties, however you want to call them. One of them is a cheese and onion pie and the other is a Cornish style pasty because we can't call it Cornish pasty because it's the law. You can only call a Cornish pasty a Cornish pasty if it's made within the boundaries of Cornwall. So we're going to call it a Great Harwood pasty just for the sake of it. Um, however, I have um, consulted with the uh, web page of the Cornish pasty foundation, if you like. Uh, I've got the recipe because so it's the race when you go down to Cornwall. They're absolutely fantastic. So two different sorts of pastry, very, very similar in recipe. Uh, we've got 500 grams of plain flour, a pinch of salt in there, and I've got 250 grams of lard in there. Um, you can, of course, use a vegetable style shortening instead if you have any religious reasons why you don't like lard, or of course, if you are a vegetarian. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for that one. I prefer lard in my pastries, especially in my savoury pastries, because it's a lot shorter. For the pasty pastry, we're using a bread flour, which sounds a little bit strange, but you want it to be quite robust because it's going to hold a meat filling inside it. It's going to bake in the oven for a little bit longer than something like this. And the fat, again, I've used lard, so I've got half lard and half butter, 125 grams of each. So all we're going to do with these is we're going to rub them in. So we're using the rubbing in method. Sweet pastry, when we made the Bakewell tarts, we used a creaming method, if you remember, we creamed the sugar and the margarine, the butter together, and then added eggs and uh, flour. This, we're just gonna rub them in. So you may remember doing this. I'm just gonna put the, the fat in there. I'll do one at a time. We might go on to a time frame. No, time lapse with these, um, because it might take a little while. So to rub it in, all you're doing is getting the fat and you're gonna start rubbing it between your fingers with the flour. Now you'll probably remember doing this with your nans, right? So I remember doing it, sitting there for hours. And you want it to become like a breadcrumb consistency. I'm just going to do that. We're not going to add any water yet. I've got my salt in there in the flour already. So I did get asked a question the other day um, whether the bowls are important in these because they noticed I've been using a metal bowl a lot. The answer to that is no. Um, with a pastry, you want to be as cool as possible, really. But it won't matter whilst you're making it. It's afterwards when you're rolling it out that helps. So, here we go. So, I've just come to the end of rubbing this in now, a finer breadcrumb. I am going to when we come to mix this, I am going to mix this for a little bit longer than I will the other pastry because of the bread flour. I just want to form a little bit of gluten. I don't want it to be really tough, but I just want to form a bit of gluten in it. So I can afford for this to be a little bit coarser in the breadcrumbs. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to mix this one in a second. We're not going to time lapse it. I think you can see how we rub, do the rubbing in now. What I will say though is I've got 500 grams of plain flour there and that's going to turn out to be quite a big piece of pastry. I'm doing that because I'm going to chuck some in the freezer. Now obviously with that you can make it smaller so you can use 100 grams, a couple of you, 100 grams of flour and then break that down into five. So 25 grams of lard, 25 grams of butter and about what, 30 mils of cold water or so. Um, so you can do that with pleasure. You don't have to follow that recipe, so don't, you know, if there's two of you and you've got half a ton of pastry, you don't want that, do you? But it will freeze as well once you've done it. We use it, um, I'll make some pies. This will make probably about 10 pies, or if you're making an actual pie itself, a bottom and a top. So, you know, there's 
There's plenty to go at. It won't go to waste. It never goes to waste. So there's the first lot. I'm going to mix the second lot and we'll come back to it then. So we are now breadcrumbed um, and we're ready to mix. Now I don't know whether you can see it, you probably can't because I've just asked Ella and she can't quite see it. But this mixture with the buttering is a little bit yellower than that one, which is to be expected because of the ingredients that are in there. So I don't know if you can see it or not, but if not, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Right, so I am going to mix the pasty pastry first. And what I'm going to do is make a little well in the centre, just a little hole. And I'm going to add about 125 mils of water. Now I've got more than that there, just in case I need it. And fly around. And all I'm going to do is start mixing it and binding it together. If I need to add some more water, that's fine. It's actually quite... And I just want it to be... Bound together. I don't want it at all wet. It's the last thing you want. And if I need to at this point, I will just take it out. We go sit there. And with this one, the pasty pastry, I'm just gonna knead it almost for a couple of minutes just to make sure I get enough strength in there to hold all the pastry uh, sorry all the filling sorry so it will be quite short at the minute but as I just knead it and it gets a little bit softer now this is only for the pasty pastry we're not doing this with our other short pastry and the reason for that is we don't we want that to be short. You see, you said, oh, that was the uh, pastry making that noise, not me. All right, mm. looking confused. Not seen pastry being done like this, have you? Now it will soften up as the margarine, uh, uh, sorry, as the butter and the lard uh, get warmer, and that's why we're going to put it in the fridge. So there you go. What's that about? You might need to do it a little bit longer, but so what I'm going to do now is a lot of people would put it into the fridge like that. We talked about this in the last one and they'd roll it out, but we're going to try and make it a little bit easier. And we're just going to roll it into that sausage shape. Simple as that. And we're going to put that in the fridge and then when we come to it later on. We'll make our shapes out of it and we'll roll them out from there as round as we possibly can. So that'll save a bit. So I'll just put that to one side for a minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I've just filled up with water. Ella's turned the light out because she's not happy with the lighting in here. Hey, these media students, hey. And I'm gonna add 125, uh, sorry, 175 mils of cold water. The colder the better, really. And it's about 125, uh, 75 mils. I'm just going to keep saying 125. Again, always put a little bit less in. Because you can always add a bit more. The wetter it gets, it feels tougher when you come to eat it. I'm just going to mix it and that's, I don't want any more in that at all. It's just a right. Oh, didn't want that bit. Too much. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to take it out with a flour. Make sure I get it all. And with this, I'm literally going to mix it to bring it all together and make it a little bit smoother. But it'll be well yeah, half a dozen turns, just so it all comes together. You should have a nice smooth dough. And exactly like that one, I'm just going to roll it into a sausage shape because they'll be nice and easy to cut nice and round afterwards. There we go. So I've got the two pastries now. I'm going to put them in the fridge uh, for about an hour just to chill, let the, the fats you know, harden up again. And then once we uh, have done that, I'll show you how to make the filling. Back in two minutes. 
So pasty filling. Whilst that is in the fridge, I've already chopped this up. Um, the pasty filling, there you go. I have, once again, I've not followed this exactly. I've doubled it up really. So 400 grams of beef skirt. Beef skirt is the best beef for a pasty because it, it bakes and it cooks approximately the same time as the vegetables do. Vegetables, 300 grams of potatoes. A waxy potato is quite good. If you get one that's quite floury, it'll break down too much and might become all soft in the pasty. It's not nice. 150 grams of swede and 150 grams of onion and some S&P, a bit of flavour, salt and pepper. So what I did earlier, let's put that there a second, is I've diced these up, wrong way fly. I've diced up the, the skirt. Um, we get this from our local butcher. The butcher will do it for you. They, they are brilliant. Our butchers are over in Rishton, uh, Duckworth. So Dale, Derek, Tom, Tom who's actually still there at the moment because he's been a good boy and he's staying out of the way. And all I'm doing, you see the, how I've finally chopped it up and I've got some smaller pieces in there and cut any bits away. Onion, putting it all in. Salt and peppers in with the potatoes and the swede. And this is the filling. Now, of course, if you want to make your own pasties with your own recipes, you can put whatever you want in it, any of the, uh, like a carrot as well, if you wanted to, but all I'm doing is just mixing that together. And when we come to assemble it, you'll see how it all goes. Of course, you can put herbs in there if you want. This, I am informed, is the traditional recipe. It's been a long while since I've made a pasty, but... Well, one of these pasties anyway. So that is pretty even throughout. Pieces roughly the same, can you see? The dices are, are roughly the same, so as that's baking. This will be a longer bake, so we'll put it in at a lower temperature uh, for tomorrow night's tea, actually, we're having this. Oh, big chunk, a big chunk of meat there, that'll be for me. So we'll put it in at a longer, uh, a longer time, a lower temperature, just to make sure that these vegetables are cooked whilst the pastry is baked. So let me just wash my hands a second. I'll come back and show you what I do with the cheese and onion mix. Okay, pasty mix is ready to go. We're going to be using that up in the pasties in a bit. I'm going to show you my version of the cheese and onion pasty. This is what I do. Now I base this recipe on one from the mother-in-law, so Kathleen, who, who showed me this, or I watched really doing this when I first moved up to Lancashire. I'm getting Two blocks, it does say on the recipe somewhere, wherever it's gone. 250 grams of cheese. Now I use Lancashire, because the mother-in-law told me I had to. I mean, I watched what she did. And one onion. And what I've done with the onion, I've sorted it off. So basically I've just fried it in a little bit of olive oil, just on a very gentle heat and just softened it right up. A little bit of caramelization for flavor. Now, of course, it's a cheese and onion pasta. You can use any cheese you want. Uh, one of the young ladies at work, Sue, tells me of her mother's at Christmas that just uses up all the leftover cheese and chucks it in a pasta. It's always brilliant. I'm sure it is. But this is my version. Jason at work will tell you you should be putting potatoes in it to sort of fill it out a bit and all sorts of bits, but I don't. So I've got two blocks of cheese and I'm just going to crumble them up. I've got a crumbly Lancashire, so that helps. As you can see, it's all I'm doing crumbling it up you don't want any big pieces in there and some people will be sat there going this is like a heart attack in a pie but i don't have it every day we have it once a month or so don't we else mm -hmm. if that it's just a bit of a treat we do eat healthy honest but there's no room with a pasty or a pie now and then and when we Bake it tomorrow, you'll love it. So there you go, crumbled it up, quite simply. Gonna add the onions to it. Now these have cooled down, obviously. If you put them in there, they'll start melting it. And mix it up. I've got salt and pepper in with the onions already, but obviously if you like your pepper in there, stick it in. And that is my cheese and onion 
pie filling. It says cheese and onion pie. That's cheese. That's onion. As I say, if you know of a recipe, I'm not saying that any recipe is any better or worse. This is the one that we use at home here. So I'm going to leave them for one side. I've got to go and wash up now and do a little bit of that whilst we're still waiting for the pastry. Once the pastry's ready, I'll shout Ella back. She's probably going to go for a sit down and then we'll be making them up and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so the pastry has been in the fridge. It has rested up. Um, there's our pasty pastry and that is the one for our short pastry for our cheese and onion pies. So I'm going to do that one first, um, simply because no meat products. So what I am going to do is make the cheese and onion pasty into one of these moulds. Now you can, of course, ch take, ch turn your cheese and onion pasty even into a corner, into a pasty shape, if you want. Or you can make, as we will afterwards, a large one. And you can also just put it into the tin and just put the lid on top. You don't have to put it underneath, but I prefer it underneath. So that's what we're going to do. So as I said before, rather than rolling this out into a big shape here and then cutting out sizes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, for this anyway, two pieces of pastry, one a little bit larger than the other, and the reason for that is you need more pastry on the bottom as you do on the top, because you've got the sides to go up. So just put that to one side for now. Take that piece, and all I'm going to do is press it down so I have got pretty much a circle shape as it is. And I'm just going to roll it out so it's circular. It doesn't have to be exact. I want it to be a little bit bigger than that tin. So as we did the bagels, I think it was very similar, just a slightly different pastry. This one's a little bit more robust, so I'm going to put that in. Press that down. Now this is going to have a lid on it, so we aren't going to bake this blind. So we're going to bake this as it is. So I'm going to put that to one side for one second, whilst I just get the lid ready. As you can see, just put a bit of flour on both sides and roll it out. Like I say, it doesn't have to be exact, so we're going to trim this edge off in a minute. Now then, that's ready to go on top. Bit of cold water, a brush. I just need a spoon, one second Ella, sorry. So, what I'm going to do, you can use your hands if you want. If you had all five of them lined up, you could use your hands. I'm just going to put a lot of this filling in there. So a nice good chunk of filling. There we go. Good chunk of filling. It's a bit darker now, so there's going to be some shadows, I'm afraid. A touch of water around the edge so that the pastry sticks to it. And there you have your pie. Now I am going to cut through and as I said when we did the last one back of a knife not the front of it just to cut round it Ooh, nearly dropped it then and we're going to crimp the edges and if you remember just like we did with the apple pie two fingers together push it in two fingers push it in you can use a knife uh, sorry a fork if you want to you can do it any way you want but all you're doing is sealing in that filling so hopefully it won't come out. A couple of little holes in the top, just to allow any air to come out. I'm going to put that to one side and tomorrow evening we'll bake that and we will see that as it comes out the oven. So, pasty pastry, same thing. Got, a, got the sausage shape for it. And now, again, this one, what you will see on a lot of videos is they will roll it out. It's a big shape and they'll cut round a plate. So I want quite a thick piece for this. So I'll do one at a time. Again, try and keep it as round as you possibly can. I'll roll it out and you want this to be thickish, the pastry, because you're going to want it. Ooh. I'm just going to be a bit more flour on that side. Now obviously if you cut it out with a dish, 
you'll be able to get it pretty much bob on. Now that's quite a big piece. So that'll do us. We like that because we're now going to put, where's it gone? Some of our filling in the middle. So if you remember, I mixed that earlier. Well, you really remember it because it's only about two or three minutes ago on the video. But for us, it's about an hour, an hour and a half ago. So what I'm doing, getting a good handful. Make sure you get a bit of everything and put it into the middle then. Just squash it down a bit if you can. Salt, pepper. If you want to put more salt and pepper, I'm just going to wash my hands a sec. Ideally, that's why you should, you know, perhaps have four or five of them at a time out. But I'm just going to show you the odd few. Might get a bit more in there, yeah. Again, a little bit of water around the edge. And all you're going to do is fold it over and bring it so it all meets in the middle. I've got a bit of a hole there, but there you go. We'll be all right. Now, what you will see in some shops is that the pasty is up that way and people crimp it that way. But the traditional way is, and I am not as good as those wonderful people who make them and in Cornwall, is to fold it over so you get a bit of a crimp on it. But you've now got that, the meat encased in that pastry. And was a bit of a history lesson for anybody that doesn't know. Cornish pasties were invented for the tin miners when they were going down the tin pits. And a Cornish pasty traditionally used to have one half meat and then one half a sweet filling like an apple pie style filling. So that the miners would take this down, obviously bait, take it down the pits. They would use this as their finger hold. They would eat the pasty from the meat side through to the sweet side and then this part that they've been holding on to because of all the tin on the hands they throw away so that's how the cornish pasty was invented and there we have it one cornish pasty we're going to produce some more cornish pasties with that of course now this pastry and this pastry if you wanted to you could make any filling you wanted to mince and onion pie um fry off some mince fry off some onions bit of gravy in it, just thicken it up into a tin and roll some of that on top. Bake it, absolutely fantastic. The list is endless really. Vegetarian pies, etc. Obviously if it's vegetarian, you're not gonna use any lard in it or butter, you're gonna use, well, you can use butter, but not lard, but you're gonna use a, a non-baked substitute. So I'm gonna carry on making these now um, and then we'll come back to them tomorrow night when we're ready to put them in the oven ready to eat for tea. So just prior to baking them, I'm gonna give them an egg wash. Now I've already done this. In this little cup, I've got one egg, a little bit of milk. I've just mixed it up a little bit, that's all it is. And I've already given them just a brush with this egg wash, if you like. Now I always give them a couple to make it hopefully stand out a little bit more. If you use just egg, it'll tend to burn a touch. So try and use a little bit of milk in it. Water's fine as well. And of course you don't have to put this on it, but it'll look much better when it comes out of the oven. So there you go, I've got four pasties, one cheese and onion for the, the young student that doesn't meet meat as much as she used to, but there you go. Now these pasties will take about 50 minutes at 160. Cheese and onion pie, I'm going to put it in a different oven, uh, oven on the top, about 180, but I'm going to give that another 10 minutes before we put that in. Um, you're just going to see me put it in the oven so we won't watch that. So that'll take a little bit less time, even though it's in a tin. But remember, these are a little bit thicker and they've got that raw meat inside it that needs to cook through. So, here we go. Into the oven. Plenty past, so just after seven o'clock, we'll be ready to take them out of the oven. Cheese and onion will be going in the top oven, and we'll be ready to eat our tea. Okay, everyone, back on. It's now well, 20 past, and let's have a look at these little beauties coming out. There's your pasties coming out the oven, and we'll get the cheese and onion out in a second. So, 
Put them there. Just want to get the cheese and onion out. I'll be back in two secs. Good coming. Cheese and onion, separate oven. And there is that. Okay, so one pasty. Just going to put it on the plate. And you get a few tippies with it. Just a bit of an appetizer. A few peas, where's the gravy gone? A few peas, a bit of healthiness. And we'll just cut into that one. Serve it so it looks all right. Can I just come that way? Is it in your light else? No. So we're going to cut it in half as we open it up and there, can you see that beautiful meat and the filling inside it? And to turn it around a touch so you can see. And all we want, because we live up north, is a bit of thick, lumpy gravy on it. There'll be more gravy going on that in a second. So we use a knife just to ease it out. It has, I must admit, for some reason today, typically when we're filming, stuck. So we just ease that out. I do apologise, Charlotte, but your cheese onion pie hasn't quite worked out as well as I thought it would. But you know what? It's all going to go down the same way. Let's do that and hide it a second, eh? She won't see that. And again, your chippies. She's allowed a few chippies. Few peas. You can put beans with it, of course. You want gravy with your Charlotte cheese and onion? Oh yeah. Please. Just cut into it. Oh, no. Watch your toes, watch your toes. All going wrong here now because it's tea time. And there is your cheese and onion pie. And Charlotte wants a bit of gravy on that, so I'm just going to lean round Ella. That's how she likes it. And there you go.